Hello, this is Andrew Dudich with another edition of uh, Focus on Nutrient Stewardship. And today we're meeting with somebody from Rogo. Tell us a little bit about what your company does and introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Drew Schumacher and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Rogo. And what we do is robotic soil sampling. And so uh, the reason that we started was because on my co-founder's farm, we were looking at the nutrient data and it was so up and down year to year, it didn't make any sense. So we stepped back, looked at what could be the issues. Uh, the lab error wasn't, wasn't amounting to that much. And so it had to be in the soil collection. So we started building this robot. And uh, now this is the, the fifth version. We provide this as a service now, uh, primarily to co-ops and agronomists. Um, and at the end of the day for farmers though, and we eliminate 10% of the error in soil collection today so that agronomists uh, can make better uh, fertilizer recommendations uh, to their growers. And so by doing that, uh, what are the different benefits that people could see? Because a lot of the time they're used to having the human element for soil sampling. What is the difference from that and using a machine like this? Sure, so we see a ton of value in the human deciding where the points should go you know, based on yield data or wh whatever data they want to look at, whatever soil sampling strategy they want to use um, in setting those points. However, we've all agreed and throughout history there are certain jobs that uh, robots can do better than humans. That's why a lot of factories use robots to make, um, you know, different parts uh, because they can be more precise. And so that's exactly what we're doing. We're eliminating the inconsistency in soil collection. And the two main areas are not being able to go to the exact spot and not being able to extract the exact depth. And so we eliminate those errors and take the error in soil sampling from 15 plus percent down to 5%. So this is a difference in precision as well as speed. Yes, um, so we started out trying to make it more accurate, but it also now is uh, twice as fast, uh, sometimes three times as fast as a human can pull uh, on a four-wheeler. Um, and we see a path to doubling it yet again, or maybe even tripling it in terms of efficiency. How long does it usually take from when a field is sampled to getting results that then they can make decisions based off of? So once the field is sampled, we typically send it that night or the next day to the lab. Depending on the lab turnaround time, it's usually one to two business days. Um, and then depending on the data sync, she's usually either instantaneous or has to be manually uploaded. Your, your total time could be about uh, three days or so. So you still get uh, data pretty quickly and you're able to use it in a lot of different conditions. If there's you know, dirt clods, if there's some um, wet soil, um, you know, different types of conditions that way and you, you're able to adapt for that. Yes, so we can, we can extract, and the reason in any, con, any soil condition that you want a soil sample in, uh, the reason for that is we have a high-speed auger um, that is also self-cleaning. So there's no cross-contamination, but the high-speed auger, what that allows for um, with a depth sensor is not only do you go to the right depth, but you actually extract that full depth uh, in exactly perfect cylinder. You don't take more from the top or, or less from the bottom. You don't have any soil falling out like hand probes can have. Um, the problem with probes is just because you stick them down to a certain depth doesn't mean you extract the soil at that depth. So um, by eliminating that, we can pull in about any condition that you would want a soil sample in. We can sample in frozen ground, uh, pr fairly mucky soils, sandy soils, uh, clay soils. Um, we, we haven't had any issues uh, sampling anything we've encountered with so far. And then the soil depth and uh, where you're, you know, the coordinates you're taking, all that can be variable. Yes, so that's all programmed in the mission. Um, we get the sampling points from the agronomist or whoever's setting those. We can also set them on a grid if we need to. Um, and then we just uh, send the robot out to take those points. So this will be something that different um, agronomists and different corporations will be able to utilize in our area. And then where are you based? So we're based out of West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, next to Purdue University. Um, we're already servicing Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio this fall. We, we're doing about 120,000 acres of sampling. Uh, once we get in, if we have additional capacity, we'll be taking on more acres. Right now, at the, at the moment, we're sold out. Um, and then we have plans next year to uh, continue expanding across the Midwest to provide this service to co-ops, retailers, and agronomists to get better soil sampling data.
And if you're in our area right now, we're at a special demonstration in a field just south of the Leverett Illini FS facility. And Illini FS is, you know, one of the uh, partners that you have for this area to utilize this uh, technology. Exactly. And then this is the fifth rendition, I believe. When did you start development on this and what are some of the changes you've seen to get to where we're at to, uh, now? Sure. So um, development started part time uh, about four years ago. Uh, and went part-time for about three or so years. Um, went through several iterations, started with electronic or electric motors, um, and they weren't as reliable, so we moved to hydraulics, moved to a skid steer versus a UTV platform. All things around reliability primarily. Um, and this fall, this past fall I should say, in 18, we launched our first commercial version, which was version three, and uh, that's what we sampled 20,000 acres with. It went really well. Uh, since then, we added a vacuum system uh, to increase the efficiency, and we also added uh, just a lot of user uh, sort of control to make it easier for our operators to use, um, and some, some uh, greater uh, customization. And then we've also, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, turned up the speed, so we have the ability to now sample about 150 uh, acres per hour on a 2.5 acre grid. And that's an impressive volume. And with all those advancements, where do you see this continuing to develop? So, yeah, we probably see line of sight to about 300 acres per hour in the field. Um, we want to explore things like split depth testing uh, in crop sampling. We're trying to figure out what the market really wants um, in those areas. Uh, I have no doubt that we'll be able to develop those things. And as we look forward to the next couple years, um, it's a bold aspiration, but we aspire to be the largest soil sampling company in the U.S., and we already have interest internationally, and so we're going to focus on serving the, the Midwest first and then fan out from there. Well, thanks for giving us a little bit more information on the technology, and as you've seen, it's definitely something interesting. If you would, are interested in this for your operation, get in touch with your local Align IFS representative in your area, and they'll be able to connect you to um, different ideas of how you might be able to utilize this in your operation. Thank you so much for joining us today and being able to showcase the machine that you've been working on. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Andrew. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. This has been Andrew Dudish with Focus on Nutrient Stewardship for WITY.